Today's video is going to be about the 4.0 changes and what I think about them overall. Not necessarily everything, but most of them. And also, sorry that the audio is a little weird. I'm not at home, as you can see I'm traveling, and so this isn't the best audio environment for me, but we're still gonna go ahead and do it anyway, because otherwise it would be like after Evo where I want to get this video out, but I want y'all to know my opinions on it. Similar to the other character patches, there doesn't seem to be as big of a patch compared to, let's say, the 3.1 patch. It's a lot of little fixes and a lot of consistency issues that were basically fixed in this patch, at least across the board. All the stall and fall down airs, such as Game & Watches and Zero Suits and Bowsers and those similar to that, don't, you like, used to be able to jump out of hit stun and then kind of float in the air with them, and now you can't do that, you're actually just going to fall immediately, which is nice, honestly, from a competitor's perspective, like, the opponent's perspective, because that was always really annoying, they would get a lot of horizontal boost for basically no reason, now they're just going to fall down in the air, and you're not going to have situations like against Leon versus Light, where you had, uh, you know, Leon just kind of slowly falling with his down air, and then Light thought it was going to be fine and jumped into him. Now you obviously have to respect the option immediately, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. I think it's totally fine, totally reasonable. For the other universal fix, it seems like they're, again, still trying to fix the, like, you're getting hit on a wall or, like, the moves don't, you know, hit you correctly and suddenly you fly across, like, Samus is up smash, Link's up B, Peach is up B, things of that nature. So you're probably not going to see as many people dying at ridiculously early percents to trades or grab, or ledge grabs or, like, wonky hurt boxes, like when Plant would down B into Link and then he died from an up B across the stage at, like, 10 because he just kind of flew. Like, that's probably not going to happen as much anymore, which is nice because it's just adding consistency and see that again there's not going to be as much like whoa what the hell was that type of moment and that's really nice to me a lot of characters now have their sleep animations match the rest of the characters or like their kind of frame data out of the sleep which i think is nice because obviously we now have snooze on hero so a lot of characters are it's more universal now it's going to be more consistent there's not going to be characters that have way longer times and way shorter times it's just going to be a blanket across the board and finally, there were some pretty significant buffs and nerfs in this patch, uh, only to a couple characters, really two ones that can be meta-relevant in my opinion, and I will talk about those first. And those two characters are both going to be Pokemon, actually. It's going to be Pokemon Trainer and Mewtwo. I know I had spoken, I think, in the 3.0 patch about the Mewtwo buffs and how I was excited about them, but now they finally gave Mewtwo the buff he really needed to function, which is the fact that his tail is not going to be a gigantic hurt box. And again, I was totally fine with that because I never liked the Mewtwo matchup in Smash 4, but now Mewtwo's tail is no longer a hurt box, which is going to make it way easier for Mewtwo to not get hit in random spots. He's actually going to be able to play the game. He's not going to have a hurt box as big as Bowser's, even though he's still like a top five lightest character in the game. It's going to be much more consistent, and I really, really like that. To be honest, that's kind of really the only buff he needed because he already had good normals, a good projectile. He was a little bit light, which obviously wasn't the greatest thing, but at the same time, he had a kit. It was just the tail really brought him back, but he still got more buffs. Ups. Up smash is now stronger and has more like hit detection, which is nice. His down smash is quicker, his back throw is stronger, and his side B is faster to come out, which means that short hop side B kill confirms, like uh, Gimmer discovered, and I'll link that video down below, are going to be even better now. And that's kind of scary because after like 120%, he just gets a guaranteed kill on most of the cast. So now he's going to be able to do that even faster out of shield. That's ridiculous. Again, I don't really think those buffs in particular are going to matter that much, except maybe the side B one, but it's definitely nice to have slightly stronger kill moves because, again, the percent differential between when Mewtwo would die and when his opponent would die was definitely in the favor of the opponent because of how light Mewtwo was. So now the kill move's going to be existing for more, like down smash, up smash, those being better, and even back throw, that's going to be really nice for him to close out stocks a little bit earlier. So even if he is dying at 80 to 100% because he's a light character, he's also going to be ending stocks, you know, relatively early. And we had some conflicting things for Pokemon Trainer. We had Ivysaur nerfs, but Charizard buffs. Ivysaur actually got hurt a lot in this patch, in my opinion. The three biggest moves of Ivysaur, at least three of the four biggest moves for Ivysaur, got hit being Down Air, Razor Leaf, and Vine Whip being up B. Down Air now has a smaller sweet spot and also a weaker sour spot. So the Down Air is going to be way harder to hit the sweet spot. And if it kills you, it kills you. That's more so be them being good now. But the sour spot is now weaker. So yeah, you can still get repetitive edge guards, but at lower percents, you're not going to get spiked into the bubble or almost into the bubble. And then the Ivysaur have enough time to reset up their position and then Down Air you again. It's going to be weaker than that. So you're going to be able to recover unless you get hit by the sweet spot. Obviously, I'm talking about low percents here. High percents, you're probably still going to die to both regardless. In my opinion, that's huge because Ivysaur's downer was one of the most degenerate parts about the character because that was the 
biggest spike in the entire game like by a lot, even including things like Pikachu and Pichu Thunder Spike. So I really like that change. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think Ivysaur did edge guard kind of for free, even though you saw a lot of players miss it, but I feel like that was more so a player thing as opposed to a character thing. Razor Leaf got nerfed in the fact that Side B is now laggier and also comes out slower. So it's going to be less of a threatening camping tool and also it's not going to be able to confirm into up yet higher percents quite as easily. Because there's more lag, you're going to have less time to utilize the hits done as Ivysaur. So, you know, a lot of times players would do Side B and then run up and up B or run up and up air if they were close enough. And now that's no longer going to be the case or it's going to at the very least be harder. I'm sure it still does combo, kind of like how Duck Hunt Side B still combos, but it's going to be a lot more difficult. And even though Downer got nerfed, I feel Feel like the biggest nerf is going to be to Ivysaur's Vine Whip, the up beat. They made the sweet spot of that move weaker when it hits in the air, so now down throw up beat is going to be a significantly worse kill confirm. I've seen Ivysaur players, or Pokemon trainer players I guess, talking about the nerf uh, on Twitter already, and they have been saying that it doesn't kill people at the ledge, like heavier side of characters, at like 90 at edge, which is crazy because obviously you have to scale that to like lighter characters, but at the same time you're not going to be dying at 45 or 50 from the edge anymore. You're going to be dying at 70 to 80, which still is obviously pretty early. Like, Ivysaur is not like a terrible character because of that, but I feel like the three nerfs in conjunction really do make the character struggle a lot more. At the very least, they play a more honest game, which is not what Ivysaur has ever been. However, to compensate for Ivysaur being worse, Charizard got a plethora of buffs. Like, seriously, Charizard got like five buffs and one kind of mechanics change, so that's a lot considering this patch is pretty small in the number of buffs that people got in general. His forward tilt is now stronger when it hits the sweet spot. His forward smash does more damage and has more knockback, so that move's just gonna be killing now. His up smash got fixed in the way that, like, there's less knockback on the move if it doesn't connect correctly, which is basically preventing those early deaths, as I mentioned earlier, although I never saw it with Charizard in the first place. His Nair now has a longer hitbox and also has less lag when landing. His forward throw is going to have more knockback, which means that it's going to be killing earlier, and you can now grab the ledge earlier after flare blitzing, which is a big deal because there would be so many times that I saw a Flare Blitz be like halfway through and I knew it was just gonna bang against the wall and I was able to get spikes because of it or just continued edge guards if you're not a character with a spike. So that's going to be really nice for him because now Flare Blitz is going to be a much better recovery tool. You don't have to be literally in bubble if you wanna use it. So overall, obviously I do think Pokemon Trainer got worse because Ivysaur was the shining star of Pokemon Trainer. Uh, but again, the f character's functionality as a whole is now like pretty much better because Charizard is now a more functional character. Squirtle was already good and already a lot of people are realizing that Squirtle is really really good and Ivysaur was dumb not necessarily a well-designed character but kind of just dumb and now you're not going to be cheesed as much when playing against Ivysaur like still really solid character still has good hitboxes with back air and forward tilt and obviously still has nair combos and you still have like up throw up air which still does a billion damage and up air didn't get nerfed at all so the juggling of this character is still good but you're not going to get oops died at 55 sometimes which again as the opponent of a Pokemon trainer is really nice because I don't really think that was intended. They actually buffed Lucas. I was not expecting them to buff Lucas. Lucas actually has several buffs as well. Dash attack has a longer hitbox now. Forward tilt is now better at the beginning of the move. And the sweet spot is going to be stronger even though that move is already fairly strong to begin with. Up smash has more invincibility which means that you're going to be able to attack cancel invincibility things even easier or just use it as an anti-air more effectively, so that's gonna be nice. PK Fire has less landing lag, which like, I'm not looking forward to as someone that really doesn't enjoy playing against Lucas, but I think it is a well-deserved buff. And Up Air has less lag, which is going to be nice because it's gonna be able to like, obviously if you whiff it, you're not going to be able to get punished as easily, but now it might, depending on how many frames it got knocked off, you're going to be able to combo with it better, which I think is not kind of nice because after Lucas lost down throw, his combos got significantly neutered, so I'm down for him to have a little bit better of a combo game, although now his PK Fire is better, so maybe I'm not going to be a fan of it later. Unfortunately, me, Brawler, had his fall speed reverted to what it was in 3.0 because I think they just kind of messed up in 3.1 and just deleted a number, which means that now Short Hop Fair isn't going to actually auto-cancel, which was a large majority of that character's combo tree now, so back to low tier with you. And my boy Ridley got buffs. He's actually going to be the last character I talk about. I know I'm not talking about everything, so please, if I don't mention what you want, just go check out the patch notes down below, and if you have any questions, just tweet them at me. Ridley got six buffs, the most buffs of this patch, and I am so happy because I feel like Ridley was definitely a lacking character, which is why you don't see me play him, and I don't think he's going to be a fantastic character now, but he is functioning a lot better just based off looking at the changes. Like, I think they're going to be pretty significant, at least, you know, all of them combined. 
Ridley's up smash now lasts longer and is stronger, which means that it's going to have much more of a forward hitbox than it used to, which is nice because now you can use it as a more reliable anti-air without having to turn it around. His back air is now stronger, which I don't know why because that move was already mad strong, but I'll take it. Up air's sweet spot is now bigger and easier to hit according to the patch and I don't really know what the second part means, but up air was always a lacking move and now you're going to be able to just kill with it, which again, like god bless, now they're actually going to have to be scared of you when you're juggling them, which means they may air dodge into an up smash, which again is pretty powerful, but there was no real threat before. Now you can just keep people in the air and keep going with that juggle game since Ridley's ground speed is amazing and he still has multiple jumps to reposition himself in the air, so I think that buff is actually way bigger than a lot of people think. His dash attack has more range, which I think is kind of ridiculous because I already like that move. I don't really know why it's bigger. Maybe the lunge forward is bigger or also maybe just like the chomp itself is bigger. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not updating my switch because I'm still practicing for EVO which is running 3.1 but I really like that change. You know more range is always better. His up B now comes out faster and also moves faster, which means it's going to be way harder to edge guard Ridley, and thank god, like Ridley's recovery was one of the worst parts about him as a character, and now the fact that you're not going to be able to mess with the up B as easily, again, it's not like it's instant or anything like that, you know, it's a couple frames off, but those couple frames make a big difference, especially, you know, as a character that just goes off and edge guards Ridley as Pikachu, like, I'm going to have to be a lot more scared now to do that because maybe, you know, it'll come out too fast, so that's a really nice change for Ridley, you are now going to have to respect his recovery which was already ridiculously powerful and he's going to get back to the ledge quicker which means if he's going off for edge guards he can make it back to the stage and then continue edge pressure or at least set up an edge trap. And his final change is going to be his side B, which has less lag when jumping after grabbing an opponent, because like you grab and then kind of, uh, if you sometimes like threw them off in the air, you would kind of do like that little air twirl, and I think that's what it's talking about. That has less lag, which means you can kind of maintain your stage position, or at least keep up the pressure maybe with like a falling air or a falling forward air, which is really nice. And in my opinion, the bigger buff for Ridley is going to be the fact that his side B, if you throw them at the edge of the stage, is now stronger. And like, that's crazy, because it already does so much damage, it's already pretty powerful killing lighter characters at like 110 so that killing earlier means that you have to win less neutral interactions which is really nice for Ridley because considering like pretty much every heavy has like a mediocre at best neutral except maybe Bowser but you know that you're not gonna have to deal with the neutral as much so you get those couple hits and then you get a side B and now it's gonna kill even earlier players now have to play around it more which allows you to hit things like back airs and up airs and forward airs or just anti airs in general right like normal grabs or just you know even spot dodge reads with forward smash like now I feel like these buffs kind of make Ridley feel like a much more complete character and I'm about it. I am so happy. And yeah, that's going to be about it for this one. I hope you all enjoy. I do have a couple more character videos coming at you, which didn't really get affected by the patch, thank God, so they're still relevant. Uh, again, if you did not hear your character we talked about or I didn't talk about something you wanted to, please go check out the patch notes down below. Let me know in the comments down below who you want me to make videos about, because I will gladly, because new patch equals new stuff. I'll obviously probably be making hero content at some point and just gonna keep up this content grind. As always, social media, Panda and Partner stuff is down below, and I will see you all next time.